issues of the day, uh, which are many, uh, particularly as it relates to technology. And uh, uh, this is a, a, that was the dream, and I think it's been more than accomplished, right? Where innovators, legacy companies, provocative content, we have a, where, where business is transacted. Uh, was one of the most recent parts yesterday was a few people at the party were telling me, you know, how much the reason they came back this year was they did a lot of business that last year, right? So, uh, and, uh, you know, a few of the startups that got their funding here last year. So that's what it is, right? And all that ecosystem, uh, priming that ecosystem in a way that, uh, that then result in headlines such as Nancy's. And by the way, I'm not saying this is just us. Emerge is really only the platform. This is really a movement that's being fueled by a lot of sources in our community, like United Foundation, the county, the state, and, and et cetera. But I think what Emerge has done, uh, and hope for what we to do is just jail that movement. And I think the best example uh, is really what happened with our Basel, right? I mean, like our Basel, I grew up in Miami. Miami was not the art capital of the world. As a matter of fact, if you were if you were an aspiring artist, then you will be anywhere but Miami. <laughs> you will be in Barcelona or Paris or you know New York, uh, but not Miami. And look what happened with our basketball, right? And you know, etc. So this is what our basketball is gelled. It gelled something that was already happening, and that's what we hope. Um, and that's what that was the dream for emerging. It's exactly uh, 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 taking root a lot faster than uh, than, than we are uh, expected. So that, uh, that's why we're so proud to have all of you here and keep, you know, uh, keeping our fingers crossed for the next uh, 48 hours. It's like giving birth like give like give every year. <laughs> Thank you. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Please. I have a, um, a sort of complicated, more complicated question. Not for you, but... I hope to have a simple question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I write for a, for a magazine which is concerned with investment. And um, are we at the point, recently, you mentioned our puzzle, recently I wrote about art as an asset class. And are we at the point where startups in Miami are becoming an asset class? Look, I think an asset class, I mean, uh, compared to art, it's not the same asset class, right? Because you cannot go and have, and, you know, and get your bankers to finance them, you know, and borrow money. But I believe startups are bigger than art itself because what startups are doing is really where it all begins. Think about the beginning of the ecosystem, right? It's like a coral in the, in, in the reefs. Everybody thinks it's the fish that is there. It's not. It's really a coral that brings everything else around. Right? The same thing happened here. So I think startups are employing hundreds, if not thousands of people already. They're bringing in. And then it's kind of like the chicken of the egg question because the startups bring the capital, the capital is the startup, right? So that was the, what the one was the conversation to get started. And, I'm, and, 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 and again, I referred to the article today. I mean, FinTech, um, we have always been the financial capital of Latin America. We've never been the technology capital of Latin America. And when, I, when you see those FinTech startups taking root in South Florida, and the great competition, we had the hackathon on Friday, and it was sold out. I mean, the hackathon and, and the, 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 the amount of content that is coming out of it is, uh, is phenomenal. So I believe our biggest as an asset class, I, I don't think of them as an asset class, but I believe it's our most valuable resource. I don't know how you, how you uh, uh, different uh, both. And, I, and this is really very much what we want to continue. The, the most important thing about, about Emerge America, though, was that everybody loves innovation and startups. I always, of course, the opinion, the whole Emerge team was of the opinion, innovation and startup cannot work without the institutional legacy companies. That's why from day one we reached out to the legacy companies like the IBMs and the EMCs and the Cisco's, and et cetera, because it's really important. The fun part, and I don't mean to say that anything against the legacy company, but the fun part is a startup, right? It's, this is really where you have, you know, everybody, it's fun to see these young guys and girls, uh, you know, all excited. But you really need that muscle of the legacy companies. And I think that's what we're experiencing here, that, uh, that you have a lot of, you have that magic combination of, uh, of, of both. Can I follow just one, one more thing? Um, are we at the point where uh, normal people, not incredibly rich people, uh, should be investing in startups? Look, I think every, first of all, it's a lot of fun. And, and you know, I'm normal. I don't know, I mean, the definition of normal is, uh, it, depends, it depends on who you find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> <laughs> my definition of normal and yours is totally different. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so I believe that anybody who has any spare money, you can start with very little. You can start with a thousand dollars. There are clubs, the new angel clubs, and there's a lot of clubs that are happening here. And the, the, I actually encourage that a lot because it's like playing, like I say to people, look, here, it's like playing poker. You can play Texas Hold'em without money. How much fun is that? <laughs> you play there, you know, you'll be bored to death, right? So the same thing here. If you go and analyze all the startups in the world, so I think having a little bit of money, I mean, and as you go up the, the income level, the net worth level, I think you should take a little bit of your capital. And I think that's what the, that you're seeing that today. So we have a doubt. Okay. Uh, I think this is the um, There's obviously a natural connection between uh, Latin America, as you said, uh, especially in terms of financing. How do you sort of see that um, evolving um, in terms of, I mean, there are startup movements in many countries in Latin America. How do you see that kind of connection? Or how that kind of uh, relationship, maybe more financing going to the startups? Yeah, so this is, a, again, it's a, it's a great question because this is what it's all about, right? There's incredible talent in Latin America, incredible. Our previous company, we had a very big development team. Our offshoring was done in Lima, Peru. It was not done in India, it was not done in the East. Uh, we had a big operation in Latin America. The development team uh, of, of, of one of our personal portfolio companies is in Bogota, Colombia. And the amount of startups and innovation coming out of Latin America is incredible and the talent is, is really amazing. However, there's a certain amount of bias against Latin American startups and it's the truth and I tell them uh, there's certainly a bias in Silicon Valley and there's bias in the Northeast in Boston. And this is one of Miami's biggest advantages. We have no bias. On the contrary, we funded a, uh, a uh, startup that was born in Bogota, Colombia, which is an anti-fraud. Uh, they have the best product suite that we have ever seen in protecting financial institutions from fraud. Uh, they had about 60 plus of Latin American banks, some of the largest ones. They wanted to come to the U.S. The CEO had been trying to come to the U.S., bring the product to the U.S., get funded in the U.S., and to no avail. He finally, luckily, uh, met him. We, uh, we were very impressed with him, very impressed with his, uh, with his uh, uh, product set and what he was doing. And we, on the contrary, for us, the fact that he was founded in Bogota, Colombia was a badge of honor. They've been frying fraud a lot longer than we have. <laughs> so, so basically, so we funded him, brought him to the U.S., uh, helped him not only with capital, but strategically. This company today is literally on fire. It has now hundreds of customers from the U.S., Europe, even the Far East. And he was born in Bogota, Colombia. Well, there's a tremendous amount of thirst for them, right? And this is really exactly what Miami is. It should be that platform where those startups, where if you're in Sao Paulo or Buenos Aires or wherever you are, you're thinking about this is really where you should come to get that funding, to get that lead investor, you know, to get to get known, right, in that, in that startup. And that is really your question is at the question, exactly what we, uh, what we envisioned a few years ago. And I think if we're having this conversation five years from now, you're going to see a lot more headlines like, like today. Many quick, quick questions. Uh, Ron, executive. I don't know if that is. Ron, that was a. Who took that picture of here? Oh, you look good, right? You look good. Melissa, my daughter, she always looks good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we managed to pay extra for that. Um, thank you, though. Thank you. It's a great piece. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really great piece. Congrats. Appreciate that. Um, the, qu the question really is, uh, you know, I've been involved since day one, since part of day one, and you know, I've worked with you, and I've seen, I've seen it grow. From an internal standpoint. This year, to get that sold out um, message on Saturday morning was really impressive. And but then it wasn't impressive to us because we didn't want to do it. I know, I know. <laughs> it was an internal debate. You know, do we really do this? Because I, mean, I don't want to discourage people. You know, okay. It was just literally a matter of us. It's like last night at the party. You know, like, uh, you know, we had a, you know, I mean, we had literally hundreds of people waiting, yeah. waiting to get in. So when I said, you know, and I, I, I kind of, Kind of reminds me of the old York area. You know, when they ask me why don't you go there, since I don't go there anymore because it's too crowded. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, how I felt last night, seeing all these hundreds of people there. Well, that's a good question, and I, I had another one, but building on, on that concern, where do you go from here? I mean, you're not going to go backwards. If you have 13,000 sold out this year, what's next? Well, I think also the convention center is under construction. I and mean, this year we have one hall. Uh, there were some physical limitations. Uh, I think next year, you know, we still will be, I think so, over the next 
we, our goal also, Ron, is not to have the biggest. This is like, like I like to say, this is not, it's inspired by South by Southwest, but it's not South by Southwest. I don't expect to have, you know, rally crowds of hundreds of thousands of students, nothing, you know, etc. It's just different, you know. Uh, so uh, our, 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 our real goal here is quality, not one. We want to make sure that we grow for you. Uh, and I think the best examples are now, as far as venues and other parties, what is happening this year already, a lot more than last year, is that a lot of the, a lot of the uh, sponsors and exhibitors are having their own events, mm -hmm. right? At different events, at different venues, right? I've kind of, you know, kind of uh, virtualized myself to having to go to all these, that, and I think that's what's happening. And obviously, it's that's exactly exactly more, more of the same. So I don't expect, this year we would have been happy just even with the same amount of people. And again, it's a quality. We're even happy with less if it's the right people, right? It's very easy for you to fill something. You've seen it with Cayo I mean, we, we grew up going to Cayo I mean, Cayo is a lot of fun, but you know, we don't want to have a million people and you know, that kind of that stuff. So it's really about bringing in... For dressing like that, you want to... <laughs> <laughs> well, again, dress is in the taste of the whole. Right? That's <laughs> so, uh, anyway, does that make sense? Congratulations. Yes, very much so. Yes, congrats. Yes, sir. Uh, Juan Garcia from Digital Trends. Uh, a little bit of following up on the question of, of uh, my colleague here. How much do you think Latin America is changing because of technology, you know, socially, economically, and politically? How much do you think it's changing and how much do you think it will, it will, events like this would impact, you know, the yeah. lives of people that they live in over there, obviously in a different condition than us? How much do you think that that will, that will change? I don't have a percentage, but I will tell you it's a lot, huge. Uh, it's a very interesting statistic about Latin America. Uh, the internet penetration in the U.S., we're about 90 plus percent. We're almost fully connected, right? The social media utilization of the U.S. is around 65 percent. In Latin America, the internet penetration is only about 50 percent, right? So 50 percent of the population. Social media utilization is 90 plus percent, almost 100 percent. So the utilization of social media is revolutionized. Latin America. It's revolutionary. The communication between these young generations are communicating in ways that it was not, and that communication is impacting every aspect of their life. From being able to create a startup to politics to economics. So I don't believe there's anything impacting Latin America more than technology, right? And, this, and the fast change. One of the, also the advantages that Latin America has is that the legacy infrastructure was not very robust. So you have to tear up a lot less than we build, right? So the change is happening at a dizzying pace, happening a lot faster than we imagine, right? Because you don't have to tear and replace. You're starting from you. So this is why wireless, this is why cell phone usage. Why do you think uh, Facebook and all these companies are interested today? Because Latin America is becoming a very, very market. So it's kind of like, uh, again, fueling that, that pump. So I do believe that the impact, not that I believe it, it's factual, that the impact is just being tremendous. And this is in every country, by the way. I mean, I think you're seeing an impact in politics in Latin America, where, you know, the, the, you're seeing it in the U.S. for that matter, right? But I mean, the same thing is trans, trans, translating to Latin America, where you have this communication, particularly by the young folks, that are really now displacing some of the, I don't want to say dictatorships, because they're entitled or not dictatorships, but de facto control governments. And this is all being happened and being done, and, and it's possible really because of technology. Thank you. so fast that is now the reverse, right? So uh, cyber is a big there. A, a lot of startups on the big data. I mean, there's a, and, on, on, on virtual reality. One of the number one startups in the world today is Magic Leap, which is right here. It's got, uh, you know, we, we beat the records of all the funding. 
and, 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 and when Magic Leap becomes known, I mean, with their product, I'm just getting, I'm getting like little previews. It's literally going to revolutionize the entire virtual reality world of you having this incredible uh, real life experience. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's, that's uh, they told it's really all across, but those, now you're also really having startup in non really heavy tech, right? So we're basically it's in the servicing aspect, you know, so you have, for example, I've probably met, you had the conference I started yet, I've probably met five or six new software startups that are coming to me, giving the car and by the way, we're there, we're here to do anything. But that, that wasn't happening before, right? The fact that you had that critical mass of software developers here to be able to take your idea, give it to them, architect it, and then actually execute it. Right? You would have to go somewhere else. And that's, again, very important because it's where it all starts. Yeah, Matt, Matt, you mentioned um, magically. Is magically, in your opinion, our Facebook, our Apple, our Microsoft, to the software community? It could very well be mine. Being the I, mean, I think magically in virtual reality, what they're doing today is really going to revolutionize the industry. So I think magically, you know, listen, in, uh, we, in our previous company, we used to have a data center in Santa Clara. And uh, in, I think it was around 2004, or maybe five, I don't remember, but somewhere around there, there was a very small company that became a customer of ours in the data center, and they began to grow so fast. And they began to take so much, and as you know, our business was very capital intensive, so I was very concerned, I never really heard of it. And I never really, I was very concerned, so I wanted to meet uh, uh, the principals. So I was in Silicon Valley, and you know, here the general manager set up that meeting with the principal, and here comes this guy with a very short flop here, and who did The other guy with ponytail, flip flops, and shorts. That was not very reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and it happened to be this company, this little company called Facebook, right. which actually blew up, and I literally had to move out of there because they couldn't do it. So I think once you get this critical mass and this inflection point, I do believe that Magic Leap has that potential. Very nice. And it's the talent that they draw down here that builds it's incredible. And that's it. That, and they don't leave. leave. This is one of the biggest issues yeah. that we used to have. This is really what the inspiration of uh, uh, this is what really emerged one of the changes. If you wanted in our industry to recruit what I call the number one draft pick in cybersecurity, who's the number one draft pick in cybersecurity? Uh, Stanford or MIT uh, graduate, 10 years in an intelligence agency, just about to make the change to the private world. That's the number one draft pick. Everybody wants him or her, right? It was very difficult for us to attract that kind of talent. It's not anymore. We just hired the former head of cybersecurity, you're going to hear him today in the panel, the former head of cybersecurity from the FBI in Europe. This guy had over 400 agents reporting to him. There's no major breach from uh, David Morgan, or the cell phone, you name it. Uh, Leo was involved. Leo would have never considered, not that he's moving here full time, but he would have never even considered being associated right, with this. Uh, so that is change, and that perception is very important. And it goes, it's all about the perception, making sure that you're able to to, uh, to attract that type of talent is also pretty important. How, excuse me, how important is getting someone well known name to not in the technology world, I mean, like Pitbull and Alex Rodriguez and so on, involved in uh, the project. But you know, you'll be very surprised. The only reason why Pitbull and Alex Rodriguez are involved is because of technology. Mm -hmm. Literally, they have, they have invitations to participate in hundreds of things. Mm -hmm. They have, I mean, they, they would have to, they, and the only reason is because technology is changing their lives and their industry. There's no industry that is being disrupted more than music. Zero to that note, right? I mean, you talk about it. my son, who's right here. You know, he's a musician. Both uh, from comes from Nashville. Uh, it takes a, a Cuban American kid from Miami to be a good country musician. Just to be <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so and his industry, we talk about it all the time. It's being revolutionized by technology. That's the only reason when we met Pitt uh, and began talking to him about this in his own time. Same thing with Eva. Alex, you know, he's. Athletes today, their entire life is a big data. Everything's about data today, right? So his world is all about technology being revolutionized. So the reason why knowledge of is that now is it important for the uh, for the uh, conference? Of course it is, you know, because they bring the, the the headline. But we would not have attracted them had it not been for technology.
Yes, sir. Where do you see the music industry in the future then, uh, with technology and, and the startups here? Uh, I personally work for Viacom MTV, so they're number one example of uh, being disruptive. Yeah, look, there's going to be, there's going to be, it would have to be a long conversation for me to discuss with you the future of the music industry, but there's going to be a great panel tomorrow, by the way, where uh, uh, the CEO of CNBC, Mark Hoffman, uh, uh, Cesar Conde, are having a panel uh, moderated uh, and uh, with Pitbull, where they're going to talk about the future of the music industry. You should check that one out because it's going to be affecting your industry uh, directly. But um, I think it's just the beginning. I think that the music industry, given everything that is going on, you know, the, 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 the difficulty of artists monetizing their, their talent, their, their content, is being changed now. The artists are beginning to drive it. The fact that they're able to distribute this content with having to be subjected to the rules of a big label. And you've seen it over and over again, right? And you continue to see it over and over again where these artists are being able to take their content, produce it at a reasonable cost, and distribute it uh, through a social media campaign, all at a very, very modest cost, was impossible. Right. People think that the biggest revolution was, is the, you know, the way you actually listen like to Spotify or Pandora, right. et cetera. I think that's the biggest change, is that if, you, if you're inspired, you have the talent, you can able to go and do it yourself. This was unheard of, right? right. You, could, you could have been a big, the best uh, guitar bass. You could have never have done this before on your own uh, without the help of the, uh, of the big label. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm curious about building ecosystems. So as we're building the ecosystem in Miami, um, do you see mistakes that mature ecosystems have made that we can leapfrog mm -hmm. to kind of like exponentially get ahead? Yeah, I, I mean, as far as, I don't know about mistakes, because things, things evolve. And you know, and, and it takes a lot of effort from a lot of, of everybody, right? Like I said, this is not just about Emerge. And I think one of the things that is very important, very, very important, this is one of the things that I did from the very beginning is to be inclusive, right? Because what happens is Silicon Valley, I mean, we had a big operation in Silicon Valley. I know Silicon Valley extremely well. I spent a lot of time there. And Silicon Valley tends to be cliquish. You know, if, you, if you're not part of the clique, it's really very difficult for you to penetrate. Uh, and I think that this is one, I mean, to a lesser extent, uh, Boston, even though Boston is also cliquish. Uh, we also have one of our companies headquartered there. So I think one of the things that learning from those, uh, having experienced that personally, right, trying to break into this ecosystem where I didn't belong, <laughs> you know, and uh, there are, I think one of the things that we, we emphasize from the very beginning, and I think you will see it by the, by the attendees, by the level of uh, exposition, is the in inclusive, right? <coughs> So you talked you talked earlier about uh, talent attraction and retention, um, and uh, I know that there a lot of major metros have trouble with that. Miami has always had trouble with that. Um, obviously, the number one thing for talent and and uh, attraction and retention would be good paying jobs. But beyond that, what else can Miami do to compete with those other? Because everybody's kind of kind of like going, undergoing this tech revolution now. There's a whole lot of cities that are really uh, looking for the same talent we're trying to attract. What can, what else can Miami do to to help? Attract and retain that that talent aside from offering good jobs yeah, look, at, I think at good Miami rates. Has a lot. I mean, Miami is, you know, you've seen it. You know, the explosion of growth in Miami is a lot of it uh, has nothing to do with technology. A lot of it is the fact that we are the capital of Latin America. You know, we uh, we the, our geography, our weather, our tax system. You know, I mean, it's a big deal when you move down here. You know, as a tax refugee. I mean, we. I mean, every time when when De Blasio was elected mayor of New York, we celebrated down here, right? We <laughs> let him continue doing that. California, the migration out of California, uh, you know, you can migrate. Obviously, you have to come to Florida or Miami. So I think there's a lot of advantages down here. The fact that our education system now is up to date. So it it all kind of works together. But uh, you know, uh, I tell you, I have no issues. Uh, with people visiting us, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Uh, so I think we have a lot to offer. Uh, like all major metropolitan areas, we also have our issues, right? But I do believe that overall, uh, uh, we are, are, all our offering is far, is far superior to uh, a lot of our competition. And, and the one thing that is really our biggest competitive advantage, and one of the things is, is really this entire inclusion of Latin America. You know, 700 million people which basically don't have a capital. If you think about it, you know, there's no, 
And I think that's really our biggest advantage, and it's almost impossible to, to uh, change that. But however, you know, there's a lot of other people vying for that as well, right? Like it's Atlanta, like, like you know, Dallas and Houston, et cetera. But I think overall, uh, we certainly uh, can compete very well. Thank you. <coughs> One last question? Nothing else? Well, if not, I hope you have a fantastic uh, two days. Very proud to have you here. Thank you for all your coverage and, and support, and uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs>